On the 21st of January, 1986, three teenage friends set sail in a boat of their own design. The friends were Anthony R. Barnes, Mitchell David Zimney, and Keith Humanick, and they had worked together to craft the 10-foot-long white aluminum boat. Mitchell came from a family of fishermen, which might have helped him in the construction of the vessel. His older brother had actually tragically drowned in a fishing accident three months prior. On that late January morning, the three boys set out on the ocean in their homemade boat, planning to make a short trip before returning to shore. They were last seen near Fidalgo Island, off the coast of Anacortes, Washington. Not only did the teenagers never return to shore, but the boys were never seen again. Search teams found one of the boat's oars on the south side of Burroughs Island, but the actual boat and the bodies of the boys were never recovered. Anthony is identifiable by a scar on his knee. At the time of his disappearance, he was wearing a gray ski coat with a blue stripe and a light blue sweatsuit. Mitchell is identifiable by a surgical scar on his right knee and an orthopedic nail in the same knee from that surgery. He had previously broken his hand and, at the time of his disappearance, was wearing a bright yellow sweatshirt, jeans, white tennis shoes, and a red baseball cap. Keith is identifiable by a congenital hip deformity. At the time of his disappearance, he was wearing a blue ski jacket, a shirt that was either red or white, jeans, white K2 sneakers, a K2 baseball cap, and mirrored sunglasses. The boys would be in their 50s now, and while they are presumed drowned, likely forever lost at sea, their community still holds out hope of finding them. Please pass on any information about the boys you might have to the designated phone numbers in the description below. On November 5, 1992, 16-year-old Douglas John Becker, nicknamed DJ, was planning to return home. He had run away from the Oak Harbor home he shared with his mother and sister several weeks earlier to live with a friend in Anacortes, Washington. He slept on this friend's couch for several nights before the friend's father asked him to leave. Douglas decided to return home via hitchhiking but never told his family that he was returning. His mother only learned of his plan when she called his friend's household to speak with Douglas and found that he had already departed for home. By the time she called, he should have been long safe at home, so she immediately reported him missing to the police. However, nothing came of this. Douglas was never seen again. Douglas had initially run away from home because he was receiving threats to his life. The teenager was involved with a questionable crowd and took illicit drugs at the time of his disappearance. In fact, it was initially believed he had run away to Anacortes to avoid prosecution since he was slated to enter a juvenile detention facility later that year. However, the threats to his life were later identified as the probable cause of his attempt to run away. He had been planning to stay in Anacortes for quite some time, as is evidenced through the fact that he had enrolled himself in classes at the local high school. However, Douglas would never get the chance to attend these classes. There are several possibilities as to what happened to Douglas. When he first ran away, before she figured out who he was staying with, his mother heard rumors that he was killed in a drug deal gone wrong. Perhaps this fate did eventually befall Douglas, and his killers covered it up. However, he left his friend's house with the explicit intention of hitchhiking home. Perhaps he got in a car with someone who had terrible plans for the teenager, and his body is concealed somewhere along the Washington coast. Or maybe Douglas simply ran away eager to escape the consequences of his actions and the chapter of his life that he had already effectively ruined. Nobody knows, however, and no evidence has come forward to solve Douglas's decades-old court case. 
Douglas's dental records, DNA, and fingerprints are on record. It is unknown what he was wearing at the time of his disappearance, and he left all identification at his mother's house in Oak Harbor. He is Native American and Caucasian, and has a scar on his right calf and on the back of his head. There is a large mole on his right shoulder. If you believe you have information that could help solve Douglas's case, please contact the designated phone numbers in the description below. In the summer of 2007, 14-year-old Joshua Price Feeback and his 16-year-old friend decided to take a boat out on Presenton Creek in Mount Vernon, Washington, which eventually feeds into the larger Skagit River. Eventually, the two boys tied their boat to a large tree trunk so they could climb out onto the shore. However, things took a turn for the worst when the boat capsized with both of the boys still in it. Joshua became tangled in the boat's ropes, and despite his friend's efforts to save him, he was dragged beneath the water when the boat fully sank. His friend was rescued by a passing boater who watched the small vessel capsize, but Joshua had already been carried downstream. Despite numerous searches both in and around the creek and Skagit River, Joshua's body was never recovered. Searches at the time were hindered because of fast-moving currents that stirred up silt from the bottom of the creek and larger river. This silt obscured visibility and made search efforts next to useless. Although police are fairly certain that the boy drowned that day, his family never got his body back, meaning they never got closure. Joshua remains missing to this day. If you have information on Joshua, Anthony, Mitchell, Keith, or Douglas, please call their designated phone numbers in the description below. Please help bring these five missing boys home.